Hello, everyone. I hope everybody's having a great November so far. Um, today, we are going to be talking about uh, turkey trots, which I'm sure if you're a race director or a timer, it is on your radar and um, you see that, uh, you know, whatever we're at. I guess today we're, we're exactly three weeks out. So um, this is your your final order time um, for those last minute things and uh, final push to get everything set up and ready to go so that you have a successful day. Um, and I know for most of the races that I've worked with, uh, this is also when we see a huge jump in registration numbers those last three weeks, um, especially with uh, as you know temperatures, at least in the South, temperatures dropped like two days ago. So. Um, finally starting to feel like fall down here i think up north they finally got some snow so um and i'm sure in california it's still 80 and sunny so um with that being said if you've not been on one of these webinars before um you should have a um a toolbar on the right hand side of the screen and you can ask questions um on that and uh, i have both james and shelly harris on helping answer those questions and if we start getting the same question over and over again, we'll pause everything and make sure to answer those questions um, out loud for everyone. Um, so we won't be doing them individually, but um, don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, we want you to be confident in your use of the race day suite and run sign up for your upcoming turkey trot. So with that being said, let's get started. My name is Chris McDonald. Um, I have been a race director and timer for 20 years. Um, my unofficial title is the Race Day Ninja, <laughs> just because I'm out there like you guys using this, uh, these tools in the field and uh, trying to figure out the, some creative ways of using um, run signups tools and also uh, best use cases. So if you do ever have a question about how to do things, uh, feel free to reach out um, and I'll have a cal Calendly link um, but also my email is crisp, C-R-I-S-P, at runsignup.com. So what we're talking about today, um, pretty much the entirety of the race day suite. Now, um, we will be doing a specific um, talk for timers uh, next Tuesday, um, but today is kind of the, the broad overview of the race day suite. So we're gonna be going through registration, check-in, specifically dynamic bib assignment, um, we're going to chat about race joy, um, go into results and photos, and then some other functions that you could be using the race, in, race day check-in uh, app for that you may or may not know about. So with that being said, um, we're going to jump straight into race day registration. I thought about putting a funny slide up about like, you know, here is the beginning of run sign up, but um, I don't know. <laughs> Figured that might be a little bit too basic as a joke. Um, so on-site registration, this is the first time that you are going to see your athletes. Now, some of you guys might put on 50 events a year, so you see your athletes, you know, every weekend, um, or they're your best friends and, and all that jazz. But um, for a lot of you, if you're putting on one event a year, um, this, is, this is it. This is the time where you get to put your best foot forward, and your athletes start to get an impression of how your event is going to go on race day because they're going to look at the the organization of how packet pickup is running um, so keep that in mind and with that being said being organized prepared for challenges is the you know key to a smooth race day um, and the reason why i say that is because um, it, we've had a lot of stories over the years of um you know, people not testing things out. I know that sounds crazy. If you ever talk to me, I'm going to tell you to test, test, test um, nonstop, you know, create a test event, create a, a test scenario, create test people, create test results, all of these things. Why? Because that gets you familiar with, with how not only you and your volunteers are going to interact with the system, but also how your athletes are going to interact with the system. And so that allows you to uh, become more familiar and uh, make it easier to, to answer athlete questions as they arise. So, but some other things are the tech side. And we've had events that, you know, we're gonna use all these fancy features. We're gonna do dynamic bib assignment. We're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna do onsite registration. We're gonna let people register right up until the race day or, or right up until race start. And 
oh, we need power. Oh, wait a minute, we need internet. So again, like, or, or I, I had an event uh, who was on a, a metered Wi-Fi or, or MiFi, and they had not opened up their Chromebooks in 363 days. And so guess what? There was an update. So they opened all their Chromebooks and somebody just went ahead and clicked update because they're used to doing it at home. And it ate through their entire bandwidth on their MiFi. And so they had internet, but now they don't. So um, just make sure you do all those updates in advance. Make sure you play with things in advance and make sure you're familiar with things. Um, and, and by doing all these things in advance and communicating with your volunteers and your athletes, you're gonna limit confusion. Um, you're gonna, you know, I would strongly advise like a, an email that goes out early, clearly stating whether or not you're gonna take on-site registrations or how you're gonna take on-site um, registrations. Ensure you have registration open at run sign up if you are taking online registrations. Now, this is something that confuses some people because no, 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 I'm just taking on the kiosk that run sign up provides. That's fine. However, you do have to have registration open. You have to have it um, available um, on the run sign up level. And then you can limit registration to only on that kiosk if you'd like. Um, and if you're you know, if you're not familiar with all this, again, this is going to be a broken record. Test it out, like create a fake race and and try it out. You know, try the try different scenarios or um, set it all up and ask a friend to register uh, and see if they have questions or or if anything was confusing for them. That way, you know that you're going to have a smooth day on race day or, or on packet pickup day. Um, and then once you've got that point, um, what the a process that I've seen very effective is creating like a one pager of how to's so that you can then pass it along to your volunteers and they can read through it, whether by email or print it out and hand it to them. And by training your volunteers and staff on how to work with these tools as well um, and what questions might come up, they will be more efficient at answering those questions and resolving issues. So most events are holding on-site registration during packet pickup. Um, and so it runs sign up on on-site registration page can be used as a registration station um, once it's turned on, or honestly, you can uh, go straight to your event page. The only thing about if you're on your event page, and this is why we have an on-site registration page, um, that is because if you're on just your regular event page, um, it, it's going to ask those people to create a profile, to use their password to get in, and it's going to leave them logged in once they complete. Um, you, can, you can reduce some of those, um, some of the things that are asked of the athlete. They don't have to create a profile. They don't, you can limit whatever questions um, you want answered. Um, so, so they don't have to fill out as much. And when they're complete, when they, when they finish on-site registration, it automatically logs them out. And that's really, really important. That way, you know, multiple people aren't logging, or not logging in, but uh, registering under one person's account that they might not even know. Um, and then some events have registration set up at running stores or sponsor locations. And so these can be, you could be doing this exact same thing throughout the entire course of the year. If you had part of your, your sponsorship activation as, you know, we're going to have registration at your running store and we're going to provide the computer um, and you're going to provide the Internet and we're going to have it set up so that anybody can register at any time at this kiosk. Um, and, and that's a great way of trying to capture people when when they're at one of your sponsors. So there are multiple types um, or, or having multiple types of on site registration can keep lines to a minimum. Um, and so the 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 push behind this is. Most people are, um, you know, they're familiar with the uh, with using a computer, but nearly everybody, especially if it's the day before packet pickup, they've got one of these. So they've got their phone with them. And so you can set up QR codes on posters that says haven't registered, scan this. It'll take them directly to registration. Um, and you can still do that same thing where it limits the uh, all the questions and, and things like that. 
but it usually if somebody's registering on their phone i say let them answer everything a lot of times it'll autofill um so it's no heavy lift for those uh for those athletes that are registering late and they're already not standing in line now the beauty of this paired with other things that we're going to be talking about is if somebody registers on their phone you know if you're using paper uh paper forms for packet pickup you know printed out like one two three four five six they're not going to be on those paper forms if you're using the check-in app and somebody registers in line 30 seconds later they're going to be on the app and they're going to be able to be looked up and they're going to have the exact same um, athlete experience that the person that registered four months ago will so also providing you know some some people don't bring their phones or some people don't have phones so providing a kiosk um, and providing a way for maybe check or cash payments is also nice for folks that you know don't have or use credit cards um, or didn't bring one. Um, so just keeping all of these different options open is uh, a great way of um, limiting lines and helping people have a great day. But just keep in mind that you will need people to manage these um, you know, kiosks. Now you don't need a one-to-one, -one. it might be like one-to-two or one-to-four or one-to-six. Um, but you will need people to manage those spots. Um, and then also by having regularly promoted uh, price increases, you know, people are, are pushed to register early. And so, um, and we've had events, I, I remember one of my events, no, no, we, um, we need a ton of people at Packet Pickup because we always have a million people that show up on race day to register. Well, what they didn't realize was they were closing down registration two or three days before the event so they were essentially, I've always um, described it as like, you know, you have a hose, you're holding the hose and you, and you crimp it. Well, you're crimping it when the hose is flowing the most. And so you've crimped it two days or one day before packet pickup. And then on packet pickup morning, you uncrimp it. And so of course, all those back people that were, that were hoping to register those other days are gonna come flooding in. If you never shut down registration, um, by using the on-site registration, online registration, kiosk registration, and um, the QR codes for people to register on their phone, um, you likely will see a huge decrease in people showing up to, um, to, to register on-site, but you'll see an increase in the total number of people that register in the last week. And that's because you've not limited the ways that they can register. So, how do you do a QR code? Well, we actually auto generate QR codes for you. Um, so there's actually a bunch of these, but the one we've specifically been talking about is the sign up link. And so if you go into promotion on the back end of run sign up and then links, you can scroll down and you will see a bunch of QR codes. And underneath you'll see small, medium, large. You can click those and it'll it'll change the size and you can quite literally right click, copy and paste it into whatever, a Word doc and make posters to put out um, or you know, however you wanna do this. And, and this is not limited to race day. So you can quite literally have these posted you know, uh, six months prior at some gala that you're putting on or something like that. Um, so just keep that in mind, but under promotion and then links is a great place. There's a bunch of other QR codes, but again, this is the one we were kind of just talking about. So on-site registration, how do you set this up? Well, under race day tools, there's an on-site registration tab there. And so you'll just turn this on. Um, you'll set an on-site registration password and a hint. Now, again, this was just a, a super simple one. Do not make any of these passwords that we're talking about today, your actual run sign up password, because there might be other people that are not you that are using these passwords. Now, this is not a password that like the athlete would need. This is a password that you would need on each device to get it set up for um, taking onset registration. Same with this optional setting to allow cash payments. So the, um, the cash payments are, if you're gonna allow people to pay with cash or, or check or you know barter with whatever frozen turkeys, um, anything that you, you know, you're gonna handle offline that, uh, that payment, this is where, um, this is where you would you would take into account that they actually did that payment to um, to complete the transaction.
So below that, you've got a number of other things such as show bib assignment on the screen. Now um, you have the ability to click this. And so as soon as they finish registration, uh, a bib assignment will come up and, um, and they're able to then, um, or, or you're able to assign them the bib on site. Um, I usually suggest for people to not do that and allow these people once they're completed to go get in the normal packet pickup line. Um, that way, again, they don't have a different um, experience with, um, with packet pickup than anybody else. So this restrict events, let's say you have a 5K and a virtual 5K. Um, and you you don't want to take on-site registrations for the virtual just because you want to limit um, the number of people utilizing the uh, the kiosks to just the people showing up for the on-site event. So you can enable this um, for just that specific event, and so you won't um, you won't physically be able uh, to register for the virtual event. You can customize the required fields. And this is what I was talking about before. You can say, you know, we don't care about your, your address. We do care about your email address. We want your city and state just because it's nice to have on the results. Um, we don't want you to sign up to be a fundraiser because the event's right now. Um, but maybe we do want to say, do you want to make a donation? That kind of thing. And then this final button is the on-site registration only. If you click that, and again, it says it right here in big red letters, by turning this on, online registrations will be disabled. Now, you still have to have a registration window open with your pricing and time that you set up. I think it's on step three of the race wizard where your price increases. So you will still need registration open until whatever, until the race starts. But by clicking this button, no one can register online. They scan the QR code. They're not going to be able to register. But if they're on one of these kiosks, then they will. So please be careful when you're using this. Some people like this a lot. Others accidentally click it and get frustrated when people can't register at home. So just keep in mind, clicking this button will limit all registrations to only kiosk users. So if we haven't already said it, turn on on-site registration well in advance and test it out. <laughs> so again, test, test, test. Um, and I, again, just standard practice, register yourself and demo the process to the volunteers. Um, you can always remove yourself or defer yourself or whatever, um, but register yourself and make sure it all makes sense and it works the way you want it to. Um, what I usually suggest is opening up your Chromebooks, laptops, whatever you're gonna do, and set the home page of any device to the on-site registration page. Um, that way, if somebody accidentally closes out, when you open it back up, boom, it pops right back up. Um, write down your on-site registration password and your cash password. We've already said it once. Again, bold, red, do not make the same at, do not make this the same as your run sign up password. Print out the QR codes that we talked about. Um, place them around packet pick, uh, pack pickup. Maybe not like at packet pickup, but leading the, the pathway leading into packet pickup. Haven't registered. Here you go. Um, and, and that allows for people to register before they even get in there. Um, and if you are going to have limited uh, internet access or no internet access, you need to plan to cut off online registration before you download um, information for the last time and ensure you've printed out copies of on site registration forms. Now, um, I will remind all of you race directors out there, please make sure you're chatting with your timers about this kind of stuff. And I only say that because if you are planning on taking registrations up until the race start or doing dynamic bib assignment and the timer does not have internet access, um, you guys are going to have a problem. So please make sure you, you chat with your timer just to make sure that all of this works for them and that they understand the process. And if they're like, what? I don't know any of this stuff tell them to join us on Tuesday at noon um, and we're gonna be doing a how-to for timers on the same stuff. So we have some other streamlining run sign up things. Um, now we're not gonna do deep dives into this because there's plenty of other places within run sign up that you can go um, to learn about, but group discounts and referrals. So for those of you that have already turned this on, great. For those of you that haven't, you still can. But on your dashboard, if you go down to promotions, click that, and you go down to referral tracking, and then setup, and click it, you now have the ability to turn that on. There's a button at the top um, to turn on referral tracking. Um, this does not do anything more than it gives people 
a, a referral link when they register, and you'll also have some additional options underneath here once you turn it on. So once it's on, you have the ability to set up referral rewards or referral refunds or swag reward, rewards. Um, the thing that I've seen the most effective is these referral rewards. Um, and so if you were to activate referral rewards, you can, eh, that is hard to say, um, you can set it up. So um, these referral rewards are good throughout this timeline. Personally, I turn referral rewards off the day before packet pickup. Why? That way somebody can't sit there at packet pickup and say, hey, click my link and, you know, and get the referrals. They're, they're going to have to do it more organically than that. But you can set it up to say, you know, once five people use someone's um, referral link, then that person gets whatever dollar amount back. So um, you can play with those and um, no one's ever to, able to get more money than they paid. Um, so and you can set it up to whatever event you want to. So a really neat way to drive organic registrations because people want to get those rewards. So they'll share their um, referral link out with, um, with other uh, potential athletes. So streamlining run sign up email marketing features. Again, there's a bajillion things that you could be doing um, and that is an official number, I'm sure. But um, for email marketing, there's so many features. We're gonna kind of focus on one. And that is QR codes, because we've been talking about it. So um, the purpose of this QR code is a pre-event email with a QR code in it that points back to that athlete's registration data. Why? Because if you bring that, if you have that QR code, that in, individual's QR code on their phone and say, hey, bring this to Packet Pickup to expedite your Packet Pickup process, they will and it speed things up significantly. On average, um, one person can check in one person on one device every 25 to 30 seconds, so about two per minute. If they have QR codes, it drops it down to about six or seven seconds. So they can move about three to five times faster if they, ha if they don't have to type in the person's name and instead just scan a QR code. It is significantly faster. So. With the email V2, you go to add content and you see QR code right there. When you click QR code, you'll see the URL and underneath that, you'll have URL type. And so um, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up picking the registration ID um, and the registration ID for packet pickup will be the code label. I usually suggest um, putting in the center and with all of this saved, this is what it looks like, registration ID for packet pickup. And every single individual will have a different QR code, even if they use the same email. So what I would also do is put in the person's name, like this is the Morristown um, Scott Coffee Run. So this is probably Bob Bickle's registration. So I would put, hey, Bob, thanks for registering. Bring this email with you because let's say his wife or one of his children also registered or he registered them at the same time, um, they would get a separate email to that same email address, but it would say who it's for at the top. Um, so just uh, another suggestion there. Streamlining giveaways um, with giveaway uh, inventories. So utilizing the giveaway tool is super, super helpful for managing expectations when they arrive on site. It's super easy to use. You don't have to cut off giveaways. Um, it integrates directly into the race day app. However, you do need to remember to add in a no shirt option. So what you do is you go into race, giveaways and add-ons and giveaway inventory. And I usually go into the advanced options. And then if you've got all these different like 5K beach run, 5K fun run, remote runner, no metal, whatever, you will link all of those together with youth smalls and we only ordered 50 youth smalls. Youth medium, link all those together. We only ordered 40. Well, these are sold out. These, we still have five left. And so by having that additional no shirt option for all events, um, it allows people, you know, they can still choose a size that maybe they don't want, but then um, if there's no shirts available, they, they're forced to choose that no shirt option. So they know in advance, they're not getting a shirt. It also provides a live breakdown of how many and what size are available. Um, now, keep in mind, you are able to make changes in the check-in app 
Um, and so we usually suggest for people to limit those changes to only administrators, because if somebody says, oh, I want a small and you allow your volunteers to change it from small to a, or, or from a medium to a small, it will override your inventories. And so you'll actually come in here and you'll see a red minus one um, in here. So um, keep that in mind. The check-in app will um, override your inventories. So race day check-in for participants and volunteers. So I, if you haven't heard me say this before, I'm gonna say it now. The race day check-in app is probably the coolest tool that Run Sign Up has. Um, if you haven't spent any time with it, do. Um, it will make your life so much easier on race day um, and at packet pickup. It speeds up the check-in uh, process for both participants and you can check in volunteers. It dynamically, bi-directionally syncs with other data points such as your registration, bib, scoring. So um, if your timer is using race day scoring, um, you don't have to have a runner back and forth if you're assigning bibs. It quite literally syncs bi-directionally. If they have to have bib change or an event change, it, it syncs back into the run signup database and, and onto the check-in app. So it's a really, really sweet tool. Um, it's super easy to process check-ins and changes, um, and it allows you uh, huge insights for race organizers. My favorite thing is to chat with an, uh, a race owner and say, you know, how many how many people come to pack a pickup? And they'll say, ah, about, um, well, let's see, probably about this many on pack a pickup day and this many on race morning. Well, now with the check-in app, you can actually look at the data. You can see how many people came in between four o'clock and 4.10 on pack and pickup day um, specifically and how many people were checking folks in and how many people each person checked in. You know, it's like, it's just, you get to drill down and it really helps you see if your volunteers are overloaded. So do we need more volunteers um, or do we need to trim down the amount of time that we're doing pack and pickup because volunteers are a resource. All these kind of things that you just need to consider um, that you don't have data points if you're not using something electronic to to track um, who's checking in whom and um, and how many people are checked in. And for 2023, we're expecting uh, 2 million check-ins. And this is used for all types of events um, across the US. It's free um, and it's available for both Apple and Android. So some things to remember. You do have to enable the check-in app and run sign up before it'll before your event will appear in the app. So you're if you've never heard of the check-in app, you might be going to your app store and you can search run sign up. In my opinion, it's the fastest way to find things. You're gonna look for that green um, check-in app, but and then you're gonna search for your event and you're gonna go into the questions things like my my event's not in in there. What's going on? What gives? Well, you haven't enabled it on the back end of run signup. So what does that mean? You need to go into race day tools, race day check-in, mobile app. You're gonna set your shared password and a password hint, and you're gonna enable check-in and disable check-in. Now, if your check-in is not currently enabled for today, let's say you've done all of this for 2023, but your check-in is not uh, enabled for today's date, then your event is not gonna show up. Now, there's no harm in putting it as today's date unless you've given everyone in, you know, in the county your password um, because nobody's going to know how to get into the event. So um, what I if you look at this, you can see this event had um, packet pickup from 923 to 1129. So, I mean, it was open for over two months. It doesn't matter. Nobody knows the password, so they cannot get in. So once this is set, then your event will show up in the mobile app. So some key settings here, um, strongly advise you to require bib. Um, if you're gonna have a QR code um, on the bib for dynamic assignment or a barcode, you'll wanna select uh, auto show camera on bib assignment. You'll wanna make sure you're showing the giveaways. Um, a lot of times you do wanna allow uncheck-ins. I almost always suggest um, prevent duplicate bibs and validate bibs. What validate bibs means is once it's given out, it's gone. You can't reuse it even if that person changes bib numbers. That bib is considered disposed of. Um, so there are additional settings like waivers, event transfers, depending on your event uh, settings for your event. And so the way you go into that, you're gonna set up presets and configurations 
We're not gonna go into all of that top to bottom. There are plenty of YouTube videos on how to do that with yours truly. Um, so feel free to go to youtube.com slash run sign up and just search for um, check-in app and you will get a whole bundle of videos showing you how to set things up. So race joy, um, for those of you that aren't familiar with race joy, it is an awesome, awesome tool to help you make the athlete experience on site completely different than what they're used to. Um, you would need to work with a race day certified timer so definitely ask your, your timer if they're uh, race joy certified. And, um, but with this, you can offer uh, a, a socially connected event experience because you know, so, many, so many times um, you know, people might travel for Thanksgiving, but they're not running with them. You know, they might be running separate or some people are coming to cheer. Well, the people at the finish line can actually track their loved one around the course. They can send cheers out. You can, um, you can put in sponsor information in there um, to have an audio, um, an audio experience as well. And especially if you're doing any kind of um, virtual event, it really provides a, a value add to those folks who aren't physically coming to the event and also allows those virtual athletes a way to, to log their, uh, their mileage and um, publish it for results online. So um, we talked about some of this remote spectator um, send Thanksgiving cheers. Um, you also have a central monitoring and communication system. So on the back end, the race director, race organizers can go on the back end of run sign up and actually see um, where all the athletes, not just the one athlete that's being tracked um, is. And there are also, um, you have off course alerts that will allow, uh, or it will notify the, the athlete that they've, they've gone. I think it's, I don't remember the exact amount, maybe 30 yards, 40 yards off course, but they'll get notified that they're no longer on the course so that they don't accidentally make that wrong turn. There's also a results integration um, for both uh, virtual events, which can push from the app and your in-person results that will show in the app. And then they also get progress alerts, which is um, their time and pace for each mile. So the monitoring system looks like this. Again, you're probably gonna be on your computer, but you're able to see the course and um, it, it gives um, your pace, estimated finish time, a global view of everybody on there and um, anyone that has uh, crossed any milestones. And, um, and you can also customize and adjust news alerts and progress uh, alert messages. So um, just a really cool tool, especially on those longer events that are out there. And when you, you can quite literally, like if you see somebody way in the middle here, you can click into somebody. So I think they clicked into someone right over here. And this was what pops up. So you can see the times that they actually hit each one of the mile markers on the course and when their estimated time uh, to finish is. Um, and this is an opt-in thing. So people that don't wanna be tracked, um, you know, they don't have to be tracked. So um, if anybody, you know, is in order to respect privacy and, um, for, for those that you know don't want folks knowing where they are, that's fine too. This is uh, an opt-in. They would have to not only opt in, they would have to download the app and carry their phone during this. So on to run sign up results. Uh, pause there for a second. So um, one thing I wanted to kind of highlight about Raceway today as we talk about turkey trots is that you know again with the custom cheers, uh, you know this is a real opportunity for the race directors out there to put a message out to their participants about why whatever charity or whatever is benefiting for this turkey trot. So last year we had only about 21 timers use race joy. We still tracked over 10,000 a couple hundred thousand uh, milestone alerts and cheers. Um, but you know we have 478 certified partners out there. So we'd really like to see this year if you know if all the timers can kind of step up and you know make this available to their race directors. Again this is a great tool so easy to load in a 5k course and give those race, race directors an opportunity to have like some custom audio delivered um, and really kind of move up your, your experience with your turkey trot for those race directors thanks yeah for sure um and you know every event that i've used uh race joy everybody's been super thrilled to not only be able to see where their friends and family are on course but also to receive cheers and notifications with 
where they are on course. So um, in terms of results, so uh, same thing going back to your timers, um, chat with your timers. Results can be pushed up live to run sign up. And if it's activated, run sign up will send text and email notifications to the athletes of their results. So, um, and once you have results published, you have a lot of other cool features that um, I think we're gonna go over here momentarily. But uh, in order to uh, set up the notifications, you just go into race day tools, results, and set up result um, notifications and links. And you just click this very first thing right up here. And that's allow participants to sign up for text messages. Um, and you can also say allow for split notifications too. So once that happens, you have a lot of perks, like I said. Um, so once you click into an individual's, um, it, it then can show you a lot of other information. It can show you splits, chip time, gun time, their pace, their overall placement, um, their gender placement, any photos that have been uploaded. Um, there's also finisher certificates that can be, um, be put on there. And on top of that, um, if you have a video at the finish line, you can actually um, upload that to YouTube. And there's a section within Run Sign Up that um, allows for you to make small clips of those people when they finish, um, which folks really like. So all of that is available if you're pushing results up to the Run Sign Up site. So we just talked about photos. So let's chat a little bit about photos. Um, again, when we're out there putting on races or timing races, um, I went to a talk, I don't know how long ago it was, but um, someone made an incredibly good point. And they said, you know, we're not in the race industry, we're in the experience industry. And I'd love to be able to say that I came up with that phrase. I don't remember who said it, but um, it was not me. Um, but I, I kind of marinated on that a lot. And the reality is, that is what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to make the best experience ever for our athletes. And the happier, more excited that um, we can make the participants, they're going to come back and they're going to tell other people. And so, again, going back to that organic growth, it's it's one of the most it's the strongest um, marketing tool out there. Um, and the more people are talking about it, the more the social endorsements are going to increase. And the, even outside of you know going back to the race joy side, you know people are sitting there spectating able to see and get excited about where their friends and family are, well, now that spectator is getting jazzed up and maybe they want to do it next year. So um, they become a future participant. So one of the ways of doing this is providing photos. And so um, race day, you know, you're only going to run one day. Well, let's not get into the ultra conversation. You might be running for five days, but you're, you're for a turkey trot, you're usually only running for one day. And, um, you know, all that, all that excitement is, it's, it's just spikes and it's gone. So how do you make that moment last for longer? Well, this is a shareable asset. You can bring participants back to your website, which is showing them those sponsors again. It's a reminder of the fun that they had that day. They can print it, they can share it on social media. Um, and it also is a, a great place to, um, kind of uses a re repository for advertising for your future events. So it's obviously connecting people and within our platform, it has the ability to share directly to um, Facebook. And um, again, going back to friends and family, I mean, when you, when you see pictures of people doing an awesome event with a, in, with a huge smile on their face, it makes you wonder, should I go do that event next year? You know, it looks, it looks fantastic. Um, and so it also allows you going back to when we talked about those virtual participants, um, because there are still a number of events. Now, virtual is obviously significantly smaller than it was back in 2020 or 2021, but there's still a number of people that feel connection, whether it be to the event or to the cause that want to be um, involved. And by giving them um, a way to upload their own photos, um, it just it, it reengages them and makes them feel a part of the event. And uh, it gives them value for that money that they paid, not just for a t-shirt and a medal that they may have gotten in the mail, but also um, for their photos and you know that race joy experience and their result online and their finisher certificate, all of these on top of each other 
just really make for a positive experience for both in-person and virtual athletes. Um, and then you can also watermark, um, put a watermark on the photos for additional branding opportunity. You can upsell that to sponsors or you can put your event logo on there too. Um, so both options are, are great for, um, for marketing. So where do I do this? Um, on the sidebar, you go to photos and photo setup and you can set up all the settings, save your photo settings. And then within each one, you can search for the people and you can either upload images or click through on results and actually see what images are or have been uploaded. Um, so all of those are available and, um, and you can also put in, um, put in logos for, for sponsors. All right, some cool other race day check-in functions. Um, and these are a little bit uh, different that most people may not have thought about but are, um, are really cool ways of using the tools for different applications. So one is a results kiosk and try not to let your eyes go bananas. As soon as I saved it, I realized like this might be too many moving parts going a little bit too fast. Um, but the way you get to this within the check-in app is you're gonna go into the general options, which is the little gear up here in the top right under my device, my device settings. Um, lookup method and kiosk mode. And then you will then select for what you're looking up is results. And so my device settings is right here. You'll open it up, scroll down, and you will change it to kiosk mode. And then you'll change this to view results. That way, when you go in and search for a person's information, like 300, it will show you their results. It looks like Kevin didn't finish. I think I have a, a little bit slower version of this. So yeah, I do. Okay, so this person was super fast, but 60 wasn't in the event. So there's no results found. 50, 50 was, and so it brings up their information. So one nice thing about this, I also have a um, an image. So you're gonna go into view results here. And so when you look for someone, so I look for 289 and I've got their information here and it says at the top time left and it times back out to this to this section. So um, you could theoretically put iPads out and or other tablets out and set them up for for this specific use case and have result kiosks. Now, again, this is going to work if your results are pushing to run sign up. So um, this application um, is pulling through the uh, the run signup results. So if your results are not at run signup and you start setting all this up and looking for people, they're not gonna be there. It's gonna say no result found. So just keep that in mind. So something else is change mode. And we're gonna go into change mode here in a second. So same kind of thing, general options up at the top, my device settings right here, lookup method is going to be kiosk mode and lookup result is gonna be update registration. And so when you look for somebody, it's going to bring up their information. Now you can limit what type of information there is. So let's think about some things that may be useful here. Well, medical tent. And so in um, medical tent is one, you could get creative with other on off bits. Um, we actually, we have a marathon that uses this and it brings up the camera and they scan, um, they scan the bib. So if they walk up on a person who has, you know, passed out, they have very specific information. Um, there's a custom question within registration that says, would you like to provide any um, allergies or any other medical conditions that will be shared with our medical professionals? Um, and we have a note in there that says, you know, this is not, you know, HIPAA, it's, it's going to, uh, you know, people are gonna have access to it and it's their choice whether or not to put something in there. Um, but it, then we also have emergency phone, emergency email or, or emergency contact um, with all of their personal information, like their, their gender, um, their age, their name um, and their phone number. So that way when, some, when one of the medical professionals scans their bib, um, it would it would come up as you know whatever 33 and it would have their information so they could see it now 
in a medical tent, you could set this to 33 and have a yes, no question for the medical tent. Was this individual seen in the medical tent? And they could change it from yes or from no to yes. Um, and then they could have another one when they leave that's a second question that says, um, was this person released from the medical tent? And it changes from, you know, no to yes. And, and that way, um, you're able to track how many people were seen. You could then later run reports on how many people were sitting in the medical tent and how many people were released um, and who they were in case you need any kind of follow-up information from them. So you, um, there's so much that you can use within the race day suite. We, we have touched the tip of the iceberg. However, I do think they're really important things that we went over today. So just in review, um, we went over that race day registration. So making sure that we had registration on, that we're testing things out in advance. Um, we then are going into race day check-in for both participant and volunteers, um, you know, and possibly using dynamic bib assignment, but we're gonna talk with our timers beforehand to make sure that they're okay with that. Um, we talked about race joy and expanding the experience of the event outside of the scope of just the course so that, so that uh, spectators and volunteers um, and, and virtual athletes are just as engaged. Um, we talked about results and how, how that can um, help not, it can help reduce questions for the timer of what's my time because the results are already published online, but it also gives a better athlete experience where you can post things like the race day photos that we talked about or finisher certificates um, or even videos. And then, you know, obviously we just now covered the, uh, the check-in other functions for you know, result kiosk, medical tent, or any other change log kind of um, pieces that, uh, that you know, you can get creative with, um, with how uh, other things that, that you might want to use those change functions for. So with that being said, um, you thank you track, so much for- You could track how many pieces of pumpkin pie were eaten. There you go. <laughs> So um, I'm not sure if there were any questions that came up over and over again, but I'd be happy to try to answer those. Um, no, everything's been pretty clear. Um, but yeah, one last question for Rob again. Anybody have any questions, throw them in. We can kind of just socialize them right now. Uh, yeah, Rob, definitely the check-in app can be used for um, um, changing bid numbers, swapping bid numbers, event transfers. If you do have a couple of events, uh, you can do all that from within the check-in app. Yep, and I'm not joking, the check-in app, it's only getting better, which I didn't think it was possible, but um, and James and Matt Avery and that crew has just been knocking out features left and right to make it even better. So it, it's just a great, great tool for not just timers, but for race directors as well. So again, like don't, I, I've worked with so many events who are hesitant, like, oh, my, my volunteer staff is older or younger. Um, I don't think it's gonna work because of A, B, or C. Now I get it, if you don't have internet, totally makes sense. But otherwise, I mean, try using it at one line and then use paper on all the other ones. That's what I did for um, one of our turkey trots. And within 30 minutes, all the other lines were complaining that they didn't get to use it. And the race director in advance had said, nobody's gonna wanna use it because they're, you know, it's an older group, they're not gonna want to. And yeah, it took, I think it took 27 minutes for every single one of the volunteers to complain that they didn't get to use it. So we just switched over live and they did incredibly well with it. And again, um, you know, you can use your phones. Volunteers can use their own phones. You, you don't have to have a, a huge outlay and in investment in, in terms of, uh, you know, iPads or Chromebooks. Uh, you can just use your phones. Awesome. Well, um, if we don't have any other questions, um, then again, I, I appreciate you guys joining us today. Um, feel free to reach out um, either to info at runsunup.com or if you have specific, uh, you know, race day tools questions, you can you can shoot me an email at crisp at runsunup.com and I'd be be happy to answer those for you. Um, and otherwise, um, you know, buy your turkey early, 
brine it. I've just learned about that. Brine your turkey. It's important. Um, and I hope you have a great turkey trot. Take care. Okay, well, I think I see some new people to the channel, so thank you all for joining us. Brian and I are here to say goodbye and thank you for watching, so goodbye and thank you for watching. If you want to see more, though, you can subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell and all, that way you get alerted when we post new videos. And if you'd like to click on the thumbs up button and let us know you enjoy this kind of content, we'd be very grateful for that, wouldn't we? You know it! Thanks, Brian. Always got my back.